everyone and welcome to Crossway Kids Online. I hope you've had a great week and you're ready to explore kindness together. We have so many awesome things in store today, so let's get straight into it. One of my favorite ways to start a service is to worship. It's a great opportunity to spend time with God and tell Him how much you love Him. So let's stand to our feet as we worship God. In this game, a picture from a Bible story will come up on the screen. This Bible story features someone who showed kindness. But the picture is going to be covered with puzzle pieces. Slowly, these puzzle pieces will disappear. See if you can be the first member of your family to guess the correct Bible story. Ready? Let's play.
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the Book of Ruth. In the land of Moab, there lived a young woman named Ruth. She married a man from Judah and must have dreamed of a large family and many children. We'll name them Zeke and Hannah and... But Ruth's happily ever after ended before it began. Her husband died and his brother too, and that left Ruth alone with her sister-in-law Orpah and her mother-in-law Naomi, whose husband died too. I have nothing left. Naomi had come to live in Moab during a famine in Judah, but she had gotten word that there was plentiful food in her homeland again, so she planned to take a road trip. Ruth, Orpah, go back to your family homes. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown me. So Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and left, but Ruth wouldn't budge. I'm going with you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Well, okay then. Finally, after a long and dusty journey, the two women arrived in Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Everywhere along the road, barley rippled in the breeze, golden and ready to harvest. Is that Naomi? She don't look so good. Don't call me Naomi. The Lord has made my life bitter. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Don't listen to them. You just need dinner and a nap. Finding food was their top priority. Some of those barley fields belong to my husband's relative, Boaz. The grain is being harvested right now. Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftovers. Go, my daughter. The law instructed the landowners to leave behind some of the harvest for people who needed food. So Ruth followed behind the harvesters, gathering every bit of barley that fell to the ground. Barley, let's see. You can barbecue it, boil it, broil it, saute it. Ruth worked hard in the heat of the day. In the afternoon, Boaz came out to survey the harvest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. Boaz spotted Ruth hard at work and asked his overseer, Who is that young woman? She came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked if she could pick up the extra grain and has barely rested all day. Boaz was moved by Ruth's care for Naomi. He waded through the barley to speak with her. Stay here and follow along where the men are harvesting. I'll make sure no one bothers you. And when you're thirsty, you get a drink from the water jars. Why are you so kind to me, a foreigner? I've been told what you've done for your mother-in-law, how you left your homeland to come here. May the Lord reward you. Boaz offered Ruth bread and roasted grain to eat, and at the end of the day, she was able to bring a large amount of grain home to Naomi. So much food. Ruth continued to work in Boaz's fields until the end of the grain harvest, but even then, life would have been very difficult for two women living alone together. So Naomi laid out a plan for Ruth. I will do whatever you say. At the end of the harvest, the workers threshed the grain to separate the edible kernel from the straw. Then they held a big celebration. When the meal was over and the lights burned low, Boaz laid down near the pile of grain to sleep. Ruth arrived and approached Boaz just as Naomi had told her to do. She folded the blanket away from his feet and lay down nearby. <gasps> Who's there? It's me, Ruth. Please give me your protection since you're responsible for our family. Boaz was surprised, but what Ruth had said was true. The Lord bless you. Don't be afraid. I'll do what you ask. Everyone knows you are wise and kind. Even though Boaz agreed to help Ruth, there was a family member who was closer than Boaz. So in the morning, Boaz set out to meet that man and the town elders to settle the matter. I will buy Naomi's land and also marry Ruth, if you will let me. Well, I sure can't purchase Naomi's land and take care of my own land too. So we're good? Go right ahead. Today, you are all my witnesses that I will buy Naomi's land 
and marry her daughter-in-law, Ruth. As soon as it could be arranged, Boaz and Ruth were married. Naomi came to live with them, and a short time later, Ruth and Boaz had a new baby boy. His name is Obed. Aren't you the sweetest little thing? So through the kindness of Boaz and Ruth, Naomi had a brand new home and a brand new family too. Everyone could see the difference in her face. Praise be to the Lord. He's given you a new lease on life, Naomi. Yeah, that Ruth is better to you than seven sons. Now, Ruth's story doesn't end there. Her son, Obed, had a son named Jesse, who had a son named David, King David. And hundreds of years later, a new baby boy was born in Bethlehem, who was a descendant of King David, and his name was Jesus. Wow, that was amazing. Even though Ruth had some terrible things happen to her, she always showed kindness to those who were around her. You see, God wants us to show kindness to everyone we meet. And that starts with those who are closest to us. And that's our bottom line for today. Be kind to your family and friends. Let's check out what our friends at Crossway do to show kindness to their family and friends. Hey guys, this is Andrew from Crossway Kids and we're asking the team how they show kindness to their family and friends. And I've got Audrey here. Audrey, how do you show kindness to your family and friends? Um, I like cooking dinner for my family. Nice, what do you cook them? Pasta, Sweet. most of the time, because that's basic. Love it. <laughs> hey Eunice, how do you show kindness to your family uh, and friends? I would just give them some massage. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Rod. Rod, hey guys. how do you show kindness to your family and friends? I show kindness to my family and friends by paying attention to them and showing that I care about them. Nice, that sounds great. Oh, didn't see you there. Yeah, because I'm secret. Hey Josh, how do you show kindness to your family and friends? I show kindness to my family and friends by affirming them in the little things that they do, and those positive things that they do around the house. Just those little things in the everyday. Sounds good, what does that mean? That means like saying thanks to mum when she cleans up the dishes on the on the sink top, even if it's just one or two, every time she does it, it keeps the sink clean. <laughs> awesome. Nice job. Uh, hey, uh, Rayeth, how do you show kindness to your family and friends? I try to be generous with my resources, maybe my money, try and you know, buy them lunch every now and then, just to try and bless them uh, as much as I can. So good. Hey, am I your friend? You are absolutely my friend. <laughs> lunch tomorrow? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> hey, ladies, how are you all? Good, thank you. Awesome, great to see you. Hey, how do you show kindness to your family and friends. I help my sister with her homework. I buy them birthday presents. I give them hugs. I help do the dishes through acts of service. Nice, thank you for that. Hey, Carls, Carls, Carls. How's things? Good, good. Hey, uh, how do you show kindness to your family and friends? Um, with my friends, I love to buy them a coffee every now and again. Nice, nice. Thanks for that. Hey, uh, Catherine, Catherine, Catherine. Hey, how are you going? Hi, I'm good. Hey, how do you show kindness to your family and friends? Uh, I actually really like going visiting my friends. When nice. they're feeling a bit lonely or a bit sad, I like to visit, pop in and say hi. Great, well, come and visit me. Okay. I love the way everyone showed kindness in a different way. But we have to remember to show kindness with the right attitude. We shouldn't do it because someone is making us but because we want to show our family and friends just how much we care about them. Let's say you only give your mum hugs when you want extra screen time, or you only help your dad in the garden or wash the car when you want him to buy you something from the shop. While hugs and helping are kind things, this really isn't the right attitude to have. We should do these things to show that we care about our family and not just because we might get something in return. Maybe there's a kid in your class who's really popular and everyone likes them. So you start to share your snacks with them and give them compliments. Again, while these are kind things, we should be doing these things for everyone and not just for those kids that we want to impress. Remember to be kind to your friends and families with the right attitude. And we're gonna brainstorm this in our family activity. Today, we are gonna be making a kindness chain. For this, you will need strips of paper and some pens. On each strip of paper, write down one thing you can do to show kindness to your family or friends this week. Then, using tape or a stapler, 
loop them through and create your chain. Make sure you share your ideas with your family. Let's give it a go. Now you are ready to show kindness this week. Think about Ruth and Boaz and how kind they were, even when it wasn't easy. God can help you do that this week. So let's pray and ask for his help. Dear God, thank you for your never ending, great big love for us. We know that no matter how many times we mess up, you always choose to love and show kindness to us. This week, someone in our family will bug or frustrate us and we will be tempted to do something to annoy them right back. Help us to show your kindness instead, even when it's the last thing we want to do. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us at Crossway Kids Online this week. Be sure to bless your friends and family this week with your kindness. See you next week. Bye.